Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay is in here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. Today we want to show you guys something kind of intriguing, fun for us, it's fun for the homeowners, it was a drag. What they have here is they had new windows put in all the way around the house uh, and somebody uh, did the plaster work. Not bad, but he had an idea how to do this and he gave it his best shot. But when you paint it, it didn't match and the fella says, well gee whiz, paint it a lot more times. That doesn't work, guys. You can put 20 more coats of paint on here, and it still won't match this. We're going to show you a way shortly. Well, tomorrow we're going to do the color coat. We're going to put on a color coat maintenance-free integrated finish. And all that means is it's bags, 100-pound bags of stucco. Then we put the color in it. And in order to feather this in so it's not noticeable and give it a sand finish, the grit of what we're going to apply tomorrow has to be much, much thicker than this. This is Santa Barbara, which is 30-30. This is 20-30, which is medium finish. And what we're going to do tomorrow is called um, heavy finish. And that texture technically is called a 16-20. It's the heaviest sand there is. Will it fix all this nonsense? <laughs> uh, no. So what we got to do is Jason and I got to chip all this crap off. There's an hour down the drain, but it, it's necessary. If I, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, guys, and that just means, can I apply another finish over this today and then come back tomorrow? Certainly, and I could spend another 25 minutes talking about that, but we're not going to do that. What I want to do is I want to show you some more things over here. Uh, just a couple things, guys, uh, and explain something to you. Say, so like, so let's look at the front of this house, for example. Now, again, paint, 20 more coats of paint is not going to match this because it's a different finish. They applied the base coat. Then they floated that. They brought the sand or aggregate out. Then they textured that. So this doesn't have a base coat with the sand in it. So no, it doesn't matter. You could put 10, 25 coats on. It's not going to match. What we're going to do is we're going to put the finish on it, another coat of stucco. Now, stucco is 50 times thicker than paint. So we're going to cover both of these in we're going to blend it in and show you how that's done um of course we look at there's a lot of little things around here guys like uh, they left a lot of weird stuff they didn't clean the windows they didn't clean the tape off here we're going to try to fix as much of that as we come as we can today jason and i just today um and madeline we're going to cover windows we're going to pressure wash the house it's like get all that stuff off of there we want dust, dirt, and grime off of this house because if we apply a bonding agent directly to the surface, well, a bonding agent to a painted surface, the stucco is only good as what it's applied to. So if the surface of the paint is not sort of, I don't know if micro-etched or micro-scored is a word, but I want to etch this, meaning I'm going to take the pressure washer, and that's 35 PSI, plus I have a turbo tip that's like 4,000 PSI. I don't want to uh, get too carried away and take all the stucco off. So you got to, I have about five pressure washers and this particular one is perfect for this job here. Uh, so when we get to that stage, like tomorrow, we'll show you how we apply it to cover all of this stuff. And here's, here's another thing, guys. The last thing I'll make is uh, an, a point about if you're going to hire somebody and you say, gee, I'm going to pay somebody a lot of dough to fix the exterior of my house. I want it maintenance free forever. What's maintenance free? That means like this brick. This brick never ever has to be painted because it's maintenance free. Tomorrow we're going to give this, the house a maintenance free so the body of the house will never have to be painted. 80 years, 100. Never have to be painted. It won't come off either if we prep it well right now. They like here. They painted this but I, I advise them. I said, Buy some Sherwin-Williams paint, and yeah, man, you're going to pay like 90 bucks a gallon. I said, Shit, I could buy that stuff at Home Depot for 30 I said, yeah, you could, and their paint's pretty good. But if you don't want to paint this again for, say, 20 years, buy the Sherwin-Williams and pay that extra money because your time is in the applications. Getting back to that story, I said, put the bonding agent on the house. I, I bet a job a few years back, and it was in this pretty town. It was like an hour and a half away from my house. I thought, dang, this is far. But then I got to the house, and I thought, whoa, this is cool. The backyard was on the river. It was in Rio Vista by 
past Antioch, Pittsburgh. And so I bid the house and you know, I told her, we're going to pressure wash, we're going to apply the bonding agent on it, and then we're going to color coat it, we're give, give you a maintenance-free finish. And anyway, make a long story short, she called me back like six months, a year later, and she says, Kirk, it's all coming off. And I said, well, okay, uh, what's that got to do with me? Uh, she says, well, what do you recommend? I said, well, if it's coming off, it sounds like they put the bonding agent in the mix or didn't use a bonding agent. She says, well, I watched them, and they showed me the can. They said, you could put it in the mixer. I thought, no, you can't. If you're using a bonding agent, say, Wellcrete Larson's, you put it on the wall. And if you're using a bonding agent, Quickcrete, by Quickcrete, you put it on the wall. If you use a Sika, the Sika is not for stucco. It's for, say, grout. You use Sika bonding agent instead of water. That makes the grout stronger. But you cannot put any material, any bonding agent in the mix. And I've seen some white gallons and I'm not going to mention names that says you can add this to the mix you cannot do that guys it dilutes it to nothingness so the stucco will adhere for say six months and then when the heat hits it pops it right off so don't do that guys anyway we're going to get started we'll we'll show you how we're doing this I told the guy dude when you come home from work you're going to see a blue house not very dark blue but kind of light blue don't freak out man that's not the finish tomorrow we're going to be applying blue gray and that's the finish. He said, well, thanks for the heads up because you might not be here. And I'll come here and say, wow, that's not what I want. Anyway, we're going to get started and we'll show you uh, as we go the steps needed to, to do it correctly. Okay, guys, we pressure wash the house. And I want to follow up on something because I don't want everybody to get nervous when I said it, that last comment about a whole color coat coming off. Well, it happens. Here's a bonding agent I'm using, guys, and do you need Weldcrete? No, you could use any bonding agent. But here's, here's what I, I want to show, which is really important, ghosting. What's ghosting? That means if you do a colored or a cementitious finish over a painted surface and the wall is not, it doesn't have the complete suction, the accurate suction, uh, suction everywhere that's consistent, it'll ghost. That just means... My new work will be, here will have one color and this will have another color. So because this has been painted like 10 or 15 times, all you got to do is, is roll it on uh, one time. Roll it on one time and it, ain't, it doesn't have to be thick either. Like that's it right there. Now here, I've, I'm going really heavy here. Why? Because I got to get the suction correct. With, if the suction is not correct, then it's going to go through. And if you guys are wondering, we don't understand what the terminology ghost or bleeding means. That just, you'll see the patchwork just like this. You won't see the texture, but you'll see the color different. This will be a different color. So what we do is like we trim it. We trim around the whole window. We trim around everything. I use this little bitty guy here. One of us, I mean, Jay and I right now are working. I got Lou in the backyard keeping him out of trouble, out of my way. So what Lou's doing is he's trimming out with this little bitty guy right here, going all the way around the house, and so am I. And Jason's actually putting this on. But since this is a DUI channel, or do-it-yourself channel, um, I figured a lot of you guys, this is something that the average homeowner is not going to do. So if you're going to hire somebody to do this, make sure they know what they're doing. So I'm showing you how to do it, guys. So if you're watching somebody and they're not doing it just like this, you can say, ah, uh, you guys are screwing up and it's going to ghost. And they say, what's going to ghost? And you say, well, I'm going to take a picture of what you're doing. And then when you're done, it better match. All the texture better be consistent. Uh, I'll tell you another thing, guys. I mean, yeah, we've been doing this forever, a lot, long time. When I first come over here, I said, guys, look, this is the finish I can give you. I don't know if you can do a close-up. This one is fine. This is like, this is a 20-30 sand finish. That's what they did here. That's a 20-30 sand finish. They floated it, then they textured it. Uh-uh. Okay, here, this is what we're going to give them. This is a 16-20 sand finish. We call it float finish, sand finish, same thing, because we use a float to achieve the sand finish that we pull the aggregate out. So that's what we're about to do. And why am I so 
ain't all about showing you guys the exact way to do this, even though many of nobody's gonna color coat their own house because we're putting on one of the darker colors right here. This right here, this is blue gray, and blue gray they come in 94 pound sacks. Just say, for example, they come in 100 pound sacks, and the color packs half of this, see, like say, half of this chart right here are base 100. Base 100 is white. And then the other half, the dark colors, have a base 200. 200 is gray. So 200 uh, base for this uh, blue-gray is now we're putting on a dark color. And dark colors tend to bleed. And we don't want it to look like if you pour, pour Clorox on blue jeans, that'll bleed. That'll bleach it. So the color is everything. The consistency is more important. And another thing, too, guys... Um, what we do is we improvise a lot. I mean, that's, that's what plastering and most trades are, improvising. I'll go around and cut in everywhere. And if I see things, um, we'll correct them. Like common sense says cover the brick before you apply the weldcrete. Otherwise, the weldcrete's going to get everywhere. And this stuff, uh, it, it adheres. That's what it's supposed to do. It adheres well. Uh, I'll show you one more thing, too, just, just to show you guys improvising, because we had said we were going to do one thing, and oftentimes, guys, I'll look at a job, and when I get there, I'll change my mind and say, well, you know, I think I'll go a different route. That's normal. You know, I look at something, and then when I get there, I look at it, and I'm thinking, hmm, what's the best way to do this? So what Jay did is he said, Dad, I'm going to take the uh, rotor hammer, and he stuck that battery on it and just chipped off a lot of the high stuff, and... We're about to get to this wall. We're going to glue it. And I'm just going to take some color coat, same thing we're going to apply tomorrow, and fill in some of these voids. So it's, uh, when you look at something, you say you're going to do something, it's okay to improvise once you get there and, and a change of plans. But anyway, guys, we're going to continue with um, gluing or applying the bonding agent on this. And uh, if you hire somebody, they got to know what they're doing, guys, so you could use this as a reference. If they say, why do we take his as the word of uh, authority? You'd tell them, hey, Kirk's been doing this 40 years. He got 900 videos, 50 million views. He knows what he's doing. Otherwise, all his videos, people were criticized. And we don't get too much criticizing. We need more criticism. Shit. Uh, we get said nothing but good stuff. You get tired of hearing uh, that stuff. Anyway, we're going to show you uh, color coating tomorrow. Uh, one guy puts it on, one guy spreads. And then after we'll show you how these walls blend in perfectly, got to hide everything, we'll show you around the house too. Because most of the house is, this is a good side. <laughs> the bad side's in the rear. All right, guys, I'll show you how, how we correct this before tomorrow. You got to know your materials. How long does it take to know your materials? Oh, it depends on the person. Could be uh, 10 years. Could be 20 years. Some guys just never know it. It just takes practice, guys. And if you are responsible for everything you do, meaning if it ain't right, you come back and redo it on your own time and for free. You learn quick. What I'm doing now is... This wall so humpty and bumpty that when I give it the finish tomorrow, I, I promise these guys a good looking wall. <laughs> so I've got to deliver on that. And you see, some materials are compatible with other materials, some aren't. We know which ones are. And anybody who's been doing this a long time like us should know that. Now, if I wanted to match any of the finishes that They've got currently, like say, I want to match this side here. Yeah, I can do that. I said I can do that blindfolded. We just uh, bring out the sand or aggregate. And notice, I just put this on. All right. Now we just, this is what they did here. They put it on, then they floated it. You can see the sand on the base coat. This, they did just like this here, guys. And by the way, the guys who did this are ten times better than the butchers who did what I'm correcting right here. These guys should be ashamed of themselves. Anyway, I guess they didn't have a clue. If I really wanted to, not that it'll matter tomorrow because I'm using a, 
uh, heavy sand tomorrow. This is uh, a light sand. This is 2030. 1620 is actually heavier. Now, if I want it, I can just skip it and match what they have here. But we're doing a different finish tomorrow. So I'm going to continue on. And there, that's the big difference, guys. You hire somebody, make sure that if they see a problem, they'll fix it. Jay and I went and looked at a job the other day. And I was just making sure my bid was right because I bid it online, got there. Some uh, father and sons were doing it. And I thought, whoa, what's up, guys? I stopped and uh, was talking to him. A couple of Hispanic guys, I said, hola, senor. And he says, hey, ain't you that guy that does videos? I said, yeah, man. And so we were talking. And what Jay and I were going to do, I had already planned on doing this wall. I was just going to skim it. Uh, it was a patch around the window, and I was going to come and skim it. And these guys tore the whole patch out, everything. So I looked at their trucks, and I thought, damn, you guys are some of the best i ever seen. I just look at you. I said, you don't look like a plaster because you're too pretty. You look like Elvis Presley. But him and his two sons, ah, oh, they were good. And I thought, man, I'm glad you came here because I was, today is Monday. I was set to go there Friday and get started, but I thought I'd go look at it yesterday, Sunday. And somebody else was doing it. But this guy had it going on, just like what we do. We see something wrong, we fix it. He tore it all off. He fixed it. He put it right back together. I thought, dude, give me your card. You're so good. Anyway, when we see things like this, you know, it's our job. And when you guys hire people, you're not certain, check references. Say, let, uh, let me have a couple references so I can call, make sure you're not a uh, fly-by-night outfit and that you actually know what you're doing. All right, guys, back. Another day, a beautiful day at that. Sun is rising over here. It's going to be coming across the house, so we want to be done before the sun starts pounding on us and pounding on the wall, as a rule. <laughs> Blue, glow, yeah, what's up with that? This was done yesterday, this is done today. We're gonna allow this to set. It's got, because we skimmed this so that this whole wall could be similar. It won't show any of these bad things. All this stuff takes practice, guys. It takes, it takes a while to learn how to do this stuff right. So this is set, it's dry as a bone. This, <laughs> we just applied that. But anyhow, I'll show you some other things. Over here, morning soldier, up and at him. Oh, <laughs> I wanted to show something right here. See these bags? Now these bags are 94 pound bags, call them 100 pound sacks. We have a forklift, it just drops them in there. As a rule, we put about eight bags in this mixer here, and that's uh, 800 pounds. And why is it maintenance free? Because of these guys right here, nasty stuff. That's pigment. The pigmentation goes into the cement. That's why we have a cementitious color coat integrated finish. Lot, that's a mouthful. Anyway, see, we're all set. This is what we're, we're set to do again. So the sun is rising in the east it's coming here it's going to set in the west and it's early it's uh it's a beautiful day you gotta love summertime because it's it's going to be about 90 90 today so we're here early we're getting started we'll come back here we'll show you a couple other things and um i say and i show you all this stuff in case you're hiring somebody they you can see what they should be doing you know generally good morning baby my daughter Madeline like say this right here I got here yesterday and this there was nothing here it was just a big gap so of course Jason and I said well gee let's go ahead and put a piece of weep screed here and fill this in because it was up here and it looked horrible so when you guys hire people make certain they're going to do things that they know or you know should be done I wasn't I didn't even see this but of course we're working and I see it and I thought fix it because that's what, what our day is. Anyhow, we're going to, uh, you know, I always look at where the sun is rising. So if it's rising in the east and it's coming toward the west, we try to stay out of that sun, especially when it's going to be about 90 degrees. Anyway, we're going to get started. And as we do it, we'll show you guys how it works. Okay, guys, we'll do some actual troweling on right now. All of that 
preliminary talk of how and why, this is how and why. And we've been here for now three hours. We've already done the whole house, except for the front here. That way we were hoping that some of it's dry so we could show you the dry finish. Like when we're done here, this is not going to be dry for at least five hours. The sun is uh, it's setting towards the west. Okay, here's what we do. I'll show you some tips, guys. This mud's been sitting. We took lunch, and so it's kind of stiff, but we can use it. We can use it. Say like, okay, we got a different finish here, different finish here, different finish there. And see that dark blue? That doesn't matter. None of this matters. It's all going to get covered up. So what I'll generally do is I'll take it and come down. I'll put it on and go back over it. The idea is, I'll show you some tips here, guys, uh, as far as getting the corner right. And this is for, say, some of you plasters. I get a lot of plasters in the UK. Say, Kirk, you know what? I was a new guy, and I sucked, but I, I caught a glimpse of everything you're doing. And now I'm the top guy, and I don't even have that much time in. Because I'll show you some tips right here. They might be boring to the homeowner, average person, but... Uh, they're important to people to know. Okay, now, I don't want to get this ceiling jacked up, guys. So I'm going to take some mud off of here. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to put a, push it right here and put it up. Now I'm going to pull my fingers back. And I'll show you why in a minute I'm doing that. I mean, granted, I don't want to get mud all over that wire, which is in my way. Uh, and I don't want to float this. And when I float, I have a big mark right there. Anyway, I'm gonna, I got too much mud on this hawk. I'm gonna take some off by application. And generally, too, uh, just covering this, Madeline put the tape right next to the window. There's no need to cover a whole window when we're just doing that little bit. All right. So, again, I don't want to get a whole bunch of color coat. This color in particular, this is blue-gray, and no, it's not this dark like a brick. When this dries, this will be a lot lighter, guys, a lot lighter. So, I'm going to finish this piece out right here. And because this is a pull trial, I don't have my square trowel in my back pocket because I can feel it's gone. No worries. What I do is do that. Okay. Now I can hit that with a brush and a float. Now what I'd like to do is I'm going to take this all the way, but I'm only going to take it here for, for, the, for the point of this video. Woo, this mud is stiff, baby. I know. I wasn't going to use it. <laughs> That's all right, man. We're using it up. Okay, now you can see the difference between, well, the mud is a little stiff, but that's okay. But I can tell the difference of the day. Right now it's had a chance to uh, warm up. And I can, I can see it with, I can feel it with the wall. All right, Bill, you can go ahead and start this over here. Come on, baby. Between me and Bill, we got 500 years of time on us. Bill's even got more time than me. That's a, lo that's a lifetime. That's a notice I'm going over the existing, and these two finishes don't match. This one is heavy, or a 2030, and the material we're putting on is a 1620. Okay, because Malin taped all this, I can just knock it out. That's nice. All right, buddy. Bill's hitting the bottom for good reason. No, that's good. I could use it. That's good, man. I could use it. How you doing, my friend? <laughs> you can interrupt the filming. <laughs> All right. Anyway, 
we're, what we're doing is a lot of things at once. I'm spreading this one, and Bill's spreading that side. And one thing about a color coat, guys, you don't have the luxury to take your time. If, uh, if I stop, that creates a joint. And I'm not talking about the gonja joint. Uh-uh, Bill, no. Not that. We don't want a joint, meaning, uh, you ever pour Clorox on blue jeans when you're washing clothes and how it stains? Well, this color's dark. And with a dark color, you don't mess around. You got to hustle. One of the things people say is, wow, you're already done? When we're doing color coats, I say, man, we don't have a choice. We got to hustle. If, if we don't hustle, we end up with color joints everywhere. And the more color in a material like this is blue-gray. Blue-gray is already starting off with the base of gray. And it's got a lot of pigmentation. So with a lot of pigmentation, you got to hustle. So I'm hustling. Bill, you're right on me, huh, baby? I love that guy, because... Oh, don't catch me, man. Yeah, it is. That's what I was talking about. Now, if I did this wall first, when we first got here in the morning, of course, we would have lost the rest of the walls. It is... Uh, you got to know what you're doing when it's a hot day like today, and... And what I consider hot, about 90. So, fortunately, the sun's not on us yet, but it will be. Now, since Jay is holding the camera, that's one less plaster. And Jay is faster than me applying, if you can believe that. But he's faster than me, so that's what it's all about when you're working in the hot weather and you're trying to do a dark color coat like what we're doing right here. So there's no time for, for nonsense in a second. See, I know I've got about five more minutes max. And if I don't get this done in five minutes, I'm going to have a joint. Now the homeowner say, Kirk, you did a video and you got a joint on my work? What's with that? I ain't paying you. So he, he'll probably watch this. So I can't have a joint. Meaning I got to hustle. Nothing old Kirk can't do. And again, right here, I'm dropping my fingers down because I don't want my fingers with full of mud to hit this right here. You guys say, what does that mean? I'll show you. Wow. I must be pretty good because I tried intentionally to get mud on that and I still couldn't do it. Okay. Now, I'll show you something, guys. Ooh, that's a hot wall. All right, so I'm going to take a float, sponge float. Now, generally, with this dark color, I got one time to dip it in here. One time. Why only one time? Because if I keep hitting this now with this dark color, it'll stain. So I want a little bit of water on this only. Get off of there. Get off of there. Get off of there. Okay. Now... Here's what I'll do, guys. Pull this back. And I'm going to hold back about a quarter inch. A quarter inch. And if I want to, I take the brush and go sideways. And this brush is, you got to go sideways. If you do this, then you leave a streak. So it's almost, almost sideways. So we get that. Coming at you, Bill. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm bringing the aggregate out. Okay, and all that means, guys, is I'm bringing the sand out. Now, we've got sand in this stucco. This is, uh, again, it's the heaviest sand, which is 1620. So I'm bringing that 1620 out. And Bill is an expert who's helping me out here, so he knows this is, this is drying up quick. That's drying up so fast, we've got to hit it quick. 
Okay, so uh, to not have a joint, and I'll go, I'll go over as soon as I finish this right here. I'll go over the whole house with you guys and show you what to expect. Madeline, uh, baby, pull this plank, please. Uh, yeah, because it's in Bill's way. Let me finish this right here. Huh? Okay, bringing the aggregate out, bringing the aggregate. All right. Ah, uh, okay, coming over here. Go ahead, you can take that plank. Take it, take that plank. Okay, all right, well, I was going to use the ladder, so I'm taking it. I'm taking the, and to the stuff Bill floated. And here's what, this is technical stuff here, guys. Okay. This, jo this wall right here, you got to take it into the corner. What happens if you take it this way? Then now you expose the corner. So that's a, that's a big no-no, guys. That's a technical thing. And the other technical thing is we don't want this all jacked up with, our, with all this mud all over here. So either take a brush like this and just hit it kind of like, like that. Or you could take a float like I have in my left hand, as soon as I get this corner colored in, and hold it a quarter inch down. Don't touch the, the, because if you touch it, what happens if I touch that? Okay, I'm gonna wipe this off, just to prove a point, guys. You take it to the top, now you see all that grit. That's ugly, so don't do that. Okay, now what I'm doing is moving this stuff out the way. And I'm going to check again on, on this bottom because, damn, Bill, you are good. Beautiful, beautiful, Bill, beautiful. Oh, no, that's looking good, man, beautiful. And that's feathered in real nice. That's how, uh, when, on a hot day, guys, whew, you got to hustle. you got to hustle. And keep in mind, now that. Okay. Now Bill's, he's putting it on there, and you see how fast it's drying because of the weather. So I'm going to take his new stuff and go into the existing stuff. Now, unless I'm on this, I'm, you know, I'm surprised, Bill, that you didn't lose that wall. <laughs> We're messing around here. We can do this. We got a lot of time in. We know how much time we got, and we don't have much. We don't have much. This wall is dry. This float is dry. Everything is dry. So the idea is to get this aggregate and texture out now. Get it out now and make it work. Because the more you go over it, uh, you'll dry it out even further. So uh, we don't, we don't want to go over it too much. And like stuff like this, I'm going to take my brush at the end and clean it up a little bit. And put some color around there where I, it, the color came off. And then we clean that up later at the very end. We don't, don't waste time with that stuff now because we waste time doing that. We lose the wall. We don't want to lose the wall. Beautiful, Bill. Beautiful. Boom. Okay. Oh, this got us hustling now. Hustling. And see, again, as I said a second ago, had I done this wall first, we would have been relaxing because it was early morning. Right now, now granted, we got here, we got started about 8 in the morning. Now it's about, uh, is it? Is it 1 o'clock? Uh, oh, it's about 1 o'clock. Uh, anyway, it's three hours since we first started. Three or four. So now this wall is just uh, drying out, and that's the nature of it. There's one thing to do uh, a small wall or a small sample, but you do a whole wall. You better know what you're doing, guys. Uh, and when this dries, it's all going to be the same color, and it's all going to be the same texture. And you can't, you can't cover a texture unless you're using a heavier texture. So that's why we're, we're with this 1620. All the way to that corner, Bill, and I'll be with you. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to show the rest of this house. All right, all right. Well, you guys see where we're going with this. What I, I'm going to jump back up on a ladder and knock this out because... We only got that little bit, but time is ticking, and I don't want colored joints. So 
So it's going to take me and Bill another 10 minutes. Then we're going to turn that camera back on and show you how everything else come out. All right, guys. Let me show you the final of what we've done here. Now, when this dries, it's all going to be the same texture, the same color, more or less. Can it have a variation? Absolutely, because this is a dark color. It's a 200 base. That means it's gray, and it's not like a painted surface. A painted surface, you have a solid surface, not with a cementitious. But the beauty of the cementitious finish is this will last much longer than us. This will be 100 years later. So I'll show you a minute ago. I was talking about going right to here, and Jay and I were going to walk around and show it to you. And Jay said, stop acting like an old man, Dad, and let's finish it. I thought, stop acting like an old man, too late. I'm past that stage. Anyway, over here you could get a better idea. This one had a patch right here, and right here it's gone. You can't get rid of a patch with paint, guys. You could enhance a a patch with paint, but it won't get rid of it. Not 50 coats, so don't spin your wheels. Call a, uh, get on Google and say, plastering contractors near me and hire somebody that knows how to do this kind of stuff. This was all bad. We prettied it up, prettied it up. And this wall was the one wall that didn't have any bad things on it. Oh, and this one, this didn't have any bad things on it. Now this one was horrible. This one had, this was the worst wall in the house. I mean, we didn't have a weep screen. We, they were missing a lot of things, but this was really, really bad. And so this is still drying because the sun is right there now. Another two hours is going to be toward the west. I'll show you just this last little spot right here. And then we had our gravy wall back here, which we were in the shade the whole day. Uh, well, that you, you can just see that. And what I did is I knocked on the door and said, dude, see this fence is against the wall, man. And in 10 or 15 years, you go to change that fence, you have a big patch there. I, you know, I said, uh, I'll tell you what, we'll break it. We've got no choice. We, uh, we'll, we'll lift it up and move it. And he says, let me check my, with my wife. I said, dude, <laughs> in 10 or 15 years, I'm going to be gone, man. I'm going to be pushing up daisies. I'll move it, fix the fence rather than 10 years from now or five years from now, decide to move that fence and then call me back and say, Kirk, you know what? I moved the fence and there's a big hole right here. So sometimes we just do things like that because we know and if we don't do it now, we could call back later and they'll say some weird stuff like that. Anyway, Jason on the camera, who spread 90% of this house. I just floated the easy stuff. Me, Kirk, my daughter, and my buddy Bill. Bill's been doing this stuff for 500 years. We want to thank you guys for watching. And as usual, if you have any questions, go ahead and write them down. But as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. Hi folks, Jason here, and I'm here to tell you something you probably already know. That like most content creators on YouTube, my dad and I are members of the Amazon Affiliates program. What does that mean? That means that we can show and link you to some of the most commonly used tools in the plastering trade on Amazon, like our hawks and trowels, scoops, floats, and some of the other things, our battery operated tools for breakout and cutting, etc. Now, if you buy those tools from those links, we earn a small percentage of that. That allows us to keep making these videos and keep putting out quality content for you folks to enjoy. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching and from the entire Giordano family, We'll see you on the next one.